one for now. I know everybody's got a lot of questions. We're going to get, we're going to have time to, to answer all of those. But just for the sake uh, that we don't get a lot of audio feedback because we do have so many people on tonight, just mute your mics. And when we get to the uh, questions, we'll let everyone open it back up. Um, and so, Tyler, if you want to record this, feel free to hit the button. Just let everyone know we are going to be recording this tonight. So anything you say may be uh, a matter of public record. This will probably end up on the YouTube page and send out to every all the other members who aren't here with us tonight. We are officially recording. Okay, right on. So welcome, everybody, to the uh, NECAT stay-at-home member meeting. Uh, I just wanted to touch base with everyone just to see how everyone was doing, give you guys some news. Like I said, I know there is a lot of questions. Uh, just about everyone on here, I think, knows me, but if you don't, just um, I'm Cameron McCaslin. I'm NECAT's uh, Director of Content and Member Relations. I basically represent NECAT and in your voice to the board. Uh, we have some of our board members with us tonight. Uh, Tyler Pittman is hosting us right now on the Zoom call. Uh, I know Brian Mansfield is on. I don't know who else has joined in. Shayla um, just so joined. Shayla's on. So uh, they can... They could also answer any of the questions when it comes from the board's perspective, some things we're going to talk about. Um, basically, they're here to help support NECAT in all of the different things that we do, help find uh, ways to make it happen, whether it be finding people to volunteer, finding money for us to be able to do these programs, putting classes together and, and making sure that all happens. Um, I am your advocate to them. So anything you tell me, I usually take it to them and say, hey, this is what people are wanting or needing and we try to you know make that happen for you guys so uh also with us uh, i know chris singleton is here with us from metro he'll uh i believe he's going to be the one answering some of the questions about uh just just an update from their point of view things that are going on with the studio we'll get to them in just a little bit but i wanted just to kind of you know rock through some of this and you know kind of tell you what's been going on at NECAT in the last couple months since the studio has been closed down and just talk about kind of what we're planning on doing going forward. Uh, before we get to any of that, I just kind of want to do a shout out to some of the people that are making stuff at home right now. I know right now it's really hard with the Peck Studio being closed. Um, it has interrupted the way a lot of you do your shows. But we do have people that are still making things at home, people that were making things in the studio that have moved over, things that people that have always been making stuff at home. But uh, Chico and V-Man uh, just started a, a, doing their program again at home and they've actually been soliciting musicians to come on and basically play via video record it and showing it that way, which I thought was a really interesting way to keep that show going. Uh, Nashville Entertainment Weekly with TJ Cates continues to turn stuff in. I think I, TJ told me he was going to be on. I'm not sure if he's here yet, but uh, congratulations to that. Spiritual Awakening 101, uh, the Inner City Church of Christ, Dr. Gang Green Sanitarium have just have been turning in episodes just about every week since all of this has happened. So it hasn't stopped them. Uh, and just this last week, I know we got new episodes of both Cultureville and Fighting Against Bullying. Uh, and I just want to congratulate all of you on continuing to be able to do your shows in the best way that you know possible. And just encourage all of you to keep doing it however you can do it right now. Um, obviously, things are a little bit different than they have been in the past. It's funny because I know uh, Zoom was kind of one of those things that we were planning on introducing at the studio whenever we put all the, the new equipment in and we were worried that not everyone was going to know how to use it. And I think everyone in the last couple of months has kind of been forced how, you know, to just take that kind of information in. But if you've got a telephone and you're, you know, and the ability to make things at home, keep making it, turn stuff in. We're looking for short form content, long form content, anything that you can continue to make, we're still trying to put it on the air. So uh, if you've got any questions about how you can do that better, if you want to reach out to me, just shoot me an email. I'm always here to answer questions and I'll try to get back to you just as soon as I can. So I know one of the biggest questions that everyone has is what about, uh, you know, how basically what does it mean for my membership now that the studio is not open? So I want to let everyone know first and foremost that we're going to be prorating everyone's amount. So like right now we've been closed just at about six months. So whenever the studio does open back up, we're going to give everyone's membership that extended amount of time. So if you had another four months on your membership, we're going to prorate that and give it to you once you get back. If you had, you know, another eight months, we're going to put that back, you know, on there. So you don't have to pay for everyone who has continued to update their memberships during this whole thing. Uh, we appreciate that. It helps uh, right now. Say we're trying to, you know, figure out all the different ways to pay for everything that has to get paid for. And, and that, that support helps. We just want you to know that whenever we do come back in, you're not going to be stuck with that. You know, that, those months to months that you couldn't use the studio, all that's going to be prorated. Um, I also just want to encourage you all to be using the Facebook member page. Just right now, 
if you have things that you're doing at home, if you need, you know, help making those happen, whether it be volunteers on making artwork or you know, maybe getting someone else to shoot some video on their side and sending it over, doing, you know, editing, be talking to each other on that. As always, you know, all the different social medias we're on at NECAT Network. So if you go to Instagram, if you go to Twitter, if you go to Facebook, or if you go to YouTube, it's always at NECAT Network or, or the website slash NECAT Network. So we're super easy to find on there. Um, I want to tell you a couple things that we've been working on in the last couple months, really, since this all has really kind of started. It was a, a major upheaval for, for all of us, including myself, who, uh, you know, I was in the office all the time seeing all your wonderful faces. And I haven't been able to do that as often. Um, but we've tried to keep NECAT going in the best way that we know how and to offer support to the community in Nashville the best way we know how. So since this has all started, we've been offering program space to Metro Nashville Public Schools. And what that has allowed us to do is we've given school teachers space to basically send us their content. And we've been running it on our channels five days a week, Monday through Friday, for kids who may not have access to your regular, you know, internet, you know, I guess internet access as opposed to access to a television. So uh, we've got a lot of really good feedback on that stuff. Since school has started back up a couple of weeks ago, we've got some new programming that has come on with that. And, and uh, the teachers are turning those things in. If you know a Metro Nashville public teacher that wants to, you know, give us any kind of video content, put them in touch with me. We're doing that at no charge to them for membership. We, we love to see that content and we want to give a space for more kids to get educated. Um, so that's something that's always available. If you have educational program yourself that you want to put on, reach out to me, you know, and let me know, and we'll try to get you in a time slot that makes sense for, you know, those kids that are watching, you know, during the day. So we also this past week started a program called Feel Good Friday. I don't know if anyone got a chance to see it, but we partnered with the Nashville Public Library, which was a really uh, cool setup because they sent us a whole lot of content that we started running across all three of our channels. And then last Friday, post, um, along with Tyler Pittman here, have a conversation with a couple of people from the Nashville Library and the Nashville Library Foundation about all the great things that are going on at the library as they kind of also get through this pandemic. Uh, the library's been closed for a, a while too, but they're doing a lot of neat stuff and all of the great uh, video content they have with their puppet shows and their, their story time reads for kids, their discussions with authors, we were able to take all that and put it on the air and we're gonna continue to put that on the air. The other great thing about this Feel Good Friday situation is we're going to be talking to different nonprofits. Um, some of them that were featured on the Our Nashville show in the previous couple of years, which uh, Trish Chris, who's with us tonight, hosted, as well as some other brand new nonprofits. We're just talking to them about what they're trying to do to navigate the pandemic. Um, nonprofits are getting hit really hard right now. It's, it is tough for everyone to keep their doors open when you can't actually open your doors to the public. But there, everyone is trying to find new ways to serve the community, including us. The great thing is we started a GoFundMe, uh, you know, basically it's week to week uh, with the plan being that every dollar that is raised for that week will be split between us and whatever nonprofit we're featuring that week on Feel Good Friday. So last week we were able to raise money for the public library. We, uh, we haven't announced all the next shows, but that'll be coming up. If you follow on the social medias, you'll be able to see kind of what's going on over there. It came up very quick and our board members uh, helped put it together. It, it was, it, it was so neat how fast it got, up and running and we're really excited about that program going on. Uh, one of the other things that we're kind of pushing right now is the NECAT Film Festival, which we're gonna be running October 24th through 26th. So right now we're taking um, different kinds of stuff, movies, short films, documentaries, music videos through filmfreeway.com, which is a platform basically for filmmakers who have different you know kinds of shorts. We do a lot of great things at NECAT. We've had a, uh, had a lot of people that have made great talk shows which may not be a fit for the film festival, but we're trying to open our doors up to more people, both here in Nashville and all, all over the place to send us content that may have never been seen before. So the great thing for you guys is if you have made anything, whether while you're at home, if you've made a short film, or if you've shot a music video in your house or, or done anything like that, you can send it in to us specifically for this weekend film festival at no cost. All you have to do is shoot me an email and I can send you a waiver form. You submit it through Film Freeway and we'll put it on the air that weekend. Um, but there's going to be a lot of really neat program. I encourage you all to watch it when the time comes. We've already got, I think we're up over 30 different short films and documentaries that have been submitted to us. I've been watching and trying to figure out how we're going to program it over those couple of days, but it's going to be a really neat block of programming. Uh, that I think hopefully, you know, going forward, we'll be able to do this yearly, but for right now, it's something 
different uh, than what you've probably been used to seeing on NECAT for all these years. So we're really excited about that. We're developing some new digital classes right now, uh, both for our school age kids and our adult learners. One of the things we're doing right now is working with our teachers from Metro Nashville Public Schools about our job shadow programs and our, our TV camps that we've done uh, historically with the National Predators Foundation. We're trying to find ways that we can still teach those kids how to make television, giving them just like a good first step into a film and TV career and trying to do it in a way that they can still get the, the access they need and the, just the professional looks that they can get from us uh, when they can't actually come into the studio physically and touch the equipment. So right now, like I say we're, we're talking to the teachers. We plan to roll that program out between now and the end of the year. Um, we're working with them and as well as just finding all of our funding right now through grants and things like that. That's one of the big things we've been working on really all year, but in the last couple of months is just trying to get all of our grants written, uh, covered from the, the people that had in the past. Whenever programs like we have shut down due to not having a studio, there's a lot of work that goes into making sure all of it gets reported on time and everyone knows that what we're doing and everybody's happy with us because we want to make sure that future funding is always in place for you guys to do all the stuff that you do. So for our adult learners, we're also looking into classes that can be taught from home. This is more stuff like round tables, a lot like what you're looking at tonight. You, you would basically log in and we would talk about different types of uh, things that you could do. So this may cover things like screenwriting or journalism, uh, doing stuff, that's more specific to like sports broadcasting, doing play-by-plays, talking to athletes and commentators and things like that. Um, we're totally open to ideas. If you have, you know, things that you would like to see that isn't exactly the hands-on stuff that you get with coming in and touching a camera or, you know, working on the board the way you have in the past, but maybe there's stuff that you want to learn uh, about how to appear on camera, you know, to how to present yourself. We're going to be trying to cover some of that stuff and we're working with some people right now on how to raise funding to do that and just putting all the programs together uh, in a way that won't add any additional cost to any of our members. You know what I mean? So you can, you would be able to participate in this uh, just as part of your you know regular ongoing membership. And we're really excited about that. I think it's going to be good. Um, like I said, financially, NECAT, like other nonprofits, we're struggling, you know, uh, just to find our footing right now during the pandemic. Me along with the board, we just, we, keep trying to find these different initiatives that we can do to both raise money and to find um, places that we can, you know, I guess just get the word out. So it really does help us, you know, for everyone, like I said, who has renewed their membership, that little bit helps. For those that you that in the last couple of weeks have shared our GoFundMe campaign, that stuff helps. Uh, if you get a chance and you, you know, you feel it appropriate, let people know on your social media that, you know, NECAD's here. We're still doing stuff. We're still broadcasting. Our, we haven't broke our programming uh, since all of this started. We've been running 24-7, offering all kinds of stuff. And, and I, I really have been excited. We've had some people that have done shows about the pandemic, have offered some PSAs, uh, you know, on how to wash your hands and things like that. That's been really exciting. So if you want to make content like that, that may not be your regular show, but you're looking to do something while you're at home, make some of that short form content. We can find places to put that. Uh, in between our regular programming. So just let me know that you want to do it and, and we'll try to try to get it on there. Um, let me see here. Sorry, I'm looking at some notes. I want to make sure I'm telling you guys everything. Um, at this point, say, is John Ferguson on? He's joining right now as we speak. Joining right now. So I'll give him just a second to, to get on. But so I know the big the big question in the room right now is when is the studio going to be open again? Uh, and I know John has got a little bit of an update on that. So we're working right now with a couple of different entities. Uh, Nashville State uh, has some rules and regulations that we have to live by. We're working with the mayor's office trying to figure out just the best way to make this happen. More than anything, uh, your safety is our major concern. So as we have been doing all of, you know, the just putting the new infrastructure in as far as equipment goes, We've also been trying to figure out better ways to conduct how we're going to just live our lives when it comes to checking in and checking out, making sure all the things are clean at the, both in the office space, in the bathroom space, in the, in the eating space and things like that. So we may have some new rules that come on whenever we do uh, get back into the studio and we're, we know it's going to take a little bit of time for everyone to adjust to that. Um, but we want to make sure that everyone is prepared for, you know, life to come more than anything. We want you guys making television. 
Uh, we want to be able to be back in the studio. I, trust me, I am so ready to get back in and see your lovely faces all again. It's so good to be on a call and get to talk to you all kind of all at once. I know over the last couple of months, I've answered a ton of emails, made some phone calls and, and things like that. But uh, if you, you know, if you need me, I'm always there. I can, best way to do it is just email me. If you want a phone call, just let me know you want a phone call. And I will try to find a time during the week that I can just touch base with you. But um, so is John, John, are you on at this point? Hey, Cameron. Yeah, I'm on. So John, I was going to open the floor up to you. I know you, you might have some updates from the Metro side just on uh, just things that we're trying to put in place. I know we don't have an exact timeline, but I thought you might want to share any news you had from your side. Sure. Yeah. So um, I spoke to the uh, task force uh, chair today uh, regarding reopening and uh, their position uh, is unfortunately where it was, uh, uh, you know, earlier um, uh, a month ago when we first reached out to them or, or maybe a month and a half ago. And they are in phase two of their four phase plan, um, which means that they are not allowing any from anyone from the public to go on to their campus. Um, they are recommending that the PEG Studio uh, coincide with the PEG Studio reopening coincide with uh, their phase four, um, which would then allow people from the public to, uh, you know, go on the campus and and um, allow us to reopen and operate as normal. Um, they are going to be, uh, according to uh, her, going to be in lockstep with the uh, Metro plan. So uh, Metro is currently in phase two. Um, and so they are not going to go to their phase three until Metro goes to their phase three. So uh, they're taking a, a, a very precautious uh, approach to this, which I think is smart. Um, I think that with the increased uh, numbers that have uh, shot up recently, I think that it's in everybody's best interest that everybody be as cautious as possible. Um, I've stated this uh, many times in the past, but I don't think anybody wants to reopen more than I do, um, with the exception of maybe Cameron. Um, but I, uh, I'm very, very excited to, to reopen um, because, especially because, um, and this goes into the next thing I want to talk about, all of the improvements that we have made uh, equipment-wise to uh, the studio. And so, uh, none more important than the new TriCaster we've installed. Um, it is a what's called a TriCaster TC1, which is an upgrade from our old uh, TriCaster 860, um, and it's got lots of, of of small improvements, lots of, of minor things that are going to be better. Uh, the main thing that we are going to be able to do with this new TriCaster is we are going to be able to um, integrate these pan tilt zoom cameras, PTZ cameras, which are, is going to change uh, the way that we shoot shows in the studio. It is going to allow us to uh, cut our crew, our, our, our productions down from, you know, four or five crew positions that are sort of necessary if you wanted to do a, a, a show that is, um, you know, utilizing all of the equipment. So we can cut it down uh, to two or even one person uh, to do all of the positions inside the control room, which is going to be huge uh, for a lot of people who are um, currently producing and, and have produced in the past. Uh, I, we know that when we've heard many people in the past uh, reach out to us and 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 uh, communicate some struggles regarding, you know, uh, finding crew and getting crew to to come in and volunteer on their shows, and we understand that it's not easy sometimes to get a crew member to come in and volunteer on their show. Um, and so we, we have kind of built um, the equipment and, and built the, the, the new equipment with that in mind, um, trying to integrate more uh, streamlined productions, trying to integrate more um, of the jobs that can be done by uh, the producer or him or herself. And so the other thing that uh, in addition to the PTC cameras, which can be controlled by the technical director inside the control room, we've also uh, got a add-on onto this TriCaster, which allows all of the, um, the, the, the functions of the TriCaster, all the functions of the switcher, they can all be controlled um, by either a laptop or even a, uh, a tablet. And so we have added 
uh, to the, the, the control room that will be available for all of the uh, producers, we've added a, 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 an iPad uh, Air, um, which can be used actually in the studio, and we've beefed up our, our Wi-Fi in the studio, so uh, the beefed up Wi-Fi will allow you to actually use the iPad Air inside the studio uh, with the idea that you can theoretically switch your show from inside the studio while you are being the host of your show. And so obviously there's going to be a lot of kind of rubbing your belly and tapping your head for, for people who are not used to that um, because it's going to be a lot of, uh, of coordination because you'll have to switch the cameras and also you'll have to talk uh, to uh, your, you know, the cameras So because you'll, you'll be the host of the show. And if you have a guest, you'll have to communicate with them. But luckily, I think one of the things that it plays into our favor is now we should be all uh, very, very familiar with sort of running our own productions uh, in these Zoom meetings or in these, you know, WebEx meetings or in these, you know, FaceTime meetings or anything else that we've been doing uh, during this lockdown. We have all kind of got used to being one man productions because we have to. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's just the nature of the way that, you know, video production or TV production has gone. You notice that all of the late time talk show hosts and all of the morning time talk shows, they're all producing from their homes and they have to take on a lot more of the jobs uh, than were available, uh, you know, than, than were being taken on, took, taken on by uh, crew positions and, and crew members and, 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 and things like that. So I think it's just the, the, the evolution of video production is now becoming more uh, sort of streamlined and everybody is sort of ha having to do more uh, to get a, a production uh, done. But it sort of fits better with, with what we are, one of our um, problems, one of our, our drawbacks uh, that we are running into, which is getting a lot of crew. And so um, it was a happy accident, I think, because I, I, I think that we were already planning uh, to, to add this equipment with this in mind before uh, the whole COVID thing. But it's, it, 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 it aligns itself perfectly with um, with what we're, we're trying to do in the studio to, to try to alleviate um, some of those some of those things. So the TriCaster is is all uh, installed. Um, we are still sort of having to um, you know uh, as a as a as a team as a, a, a production team still learning it ourselves. So um, there's going to be a learning curve for all of us. Uh, that just comes with new gear. Uh, we are going to make sure that we are as prepared as possible for when we open, so we can help. Uh, you guys with your productions and make sure that um, you know you can utilize all the new stuff. And so, uh, one of the things that we've been doing the last uh, uh, couple of, of weeks is creating um, you know some some videos, some promotional videos that uh, are going to really highlight some of the the important um, improvements that we've made uh, with this new equipment. And so, um, none more important in my opinion than the PTZ cameras, which I think is going to completely change um, everybody's show. I think that. You know, I, I, I can think of uh, one uh, production team that I think will, will very much appreciate this improvement, which is the Chico and B-Man show. Uh, I know those guys uh, come in and, and already sort of, you know, just do it streamlined with just the two of them. Um, but this is going to allow them to potentially be able to switch their show uh, with multiple cameras uh, from out in the studio while they're, they're communicating, doing their, their comedy bits with each other. So, um, you know, there's... Everybody else is also going to be able to use these uh, these new new tools, but uh, that was one um, you know show that I, I definitely thought about when I was putting this together. I was thinking to myself, this is going to be perfect for uh, Chico and Beamam, and, and they're going to allow uh, they're gonna, it's going to allow them to do more um, and and you know bring more to their show uh, that wouldn't be be able to be brought to their show with uh, the 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 older equipment. So so that's uh, uh, you know that's that's sort of my my big thing that I wanted to, to uh, communicate to, to everybody. And if anybody has any questions about some of the new stuff, there's also, uh, you know, some other smaller uh, improvements that we made. Um, and, and we are still uh, in the process of sort of, you know, finalizing those things. In addition to um, a couple additional phases that we are uh, still in the process of purchasing equipment for, um, the lighting uh, phase, which, um, you know, we want to make sure that we have everything, all of our ducks in a row with this, these first two phases first which is the audio and the, the video. And then we want to start implementing the, um, the lighting improvement and then also the field camera improvement, uh, which we've sort of been in a holding period for. But um, I think that we are, are probably going to be pulling the trigger on those, those uh, projects in the next couple of weeks.
And I'm pretty excited about the, the field equipment stuff just because I know, I mean, right now, obviously that is helpful for anyone who can shoot at home, but I think there's a lot of people that want to make things that maybe not necessarily in the studio or may want to supplement the things that they're doing in the studio outside of the building. Uh, that's going to be able to make that possible. Um, I want to thank John and Chris and uh, additionally Tim and Adam who have just been spectacular through this whole thing, helping us keep all the shows running and keep everything on the air. Uh, it, it's been drastically different for me. Uh, just, you know, not having the office to go into, but still having all of the responsibilities of making sure that we're getting all your shows, we're getting it up on time and, and making sure everyone's happy. And, and I feel for the most part, we've done a really good job of that. So congratulations to the Metro staff for that. And uh, thank you guys for all the hard work on your end. Yeah. Tim, Tim and Adam really deserve uh, the, the, the major thanks for that. They've, they've been uh, doing the bulk of the work as far as bringing in, you know, getting, getting all the shows and getting them scheduled and getting them on the air. Um, those guys do a, a fantastic job. They've been uh, really great over this, uh, over the the, the, the the shutdown and uh, the, the COVID, which we really appreciate them um, for sure. And then Cynthia, when she was when she was still here too. So everybody's pitching in and doing what they need to do. Right on. So I guess at this point we we can open the floor. If anyone has any questions for myself or for John or for any of our board members, um, or if you just want to tell us what you've been doing or what you're working on as far as at home, what you're trying to make to send to us, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, hey, I just wanted to uh, ask John, um, those TriCasters, um, what was the name of it? Were they called PZ? Were they PZ cameras? Is that correct? Uh, so uh, the, the TriCaster is actually, it's a new tech is the name of the company and it's the, the model number is the TC1. So it's the uh, new tech TriCaster TC1. And the acronym I was saying also is PTZ, uh, which stands for Pan Tilt Zoom. Um, those are actually Panasonic uh, cameras, but they P the PTZ stands for Pan Tilt Zoom. It allows you to be able to pan, uh, tilt, and zoom those cameras remotely. Um, and so you don't need uh, any camera operators. You just need one person in the control room, and he or she can operate all of the cameras uh, with a, a joystick or, or with a, what's called the positioner um, joystick on the on the TriCaster. Right, and I appreciate that because I, I got to tell you, John, as a lifetime member of public access, and you know me, I go back a long way with public access. It has been, it's always been a pain to actually try and get volunteers to come to uh, to come to where we're at because a lot of the times. You, you know, you got to try something in order to get volunteers in order to come because you're not, they're not getting paid. But at the same point, I've been trying to tell a lot of my friends about uh, community access and a lot of them are, you know, interested in it. But at the same point, the, 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 the hill is, of course, you know, taking the classes and getting all that, uh, the, the payments and all that kind of stuff. But this new one, this TriCaster you mentioned, it's uh, two to, uh, now we can just get two people in order to do the show, and that's great. I, I, I've been looking for something like this for a long time because then if you don't, if, if you do have the people to come in to help out with the cameras, you know, that's great. But at the same point, you know, you don't need to call like a whole bunch of them, like four of them, because four is a lot. Four volunteers to help out with um, with the studio is is a lot. And that's coming from a, uh, from someone like me who was doing this slime show for years and years and years. And for these to come in and help out, it's just, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of burden off of me into, when it comes to doing the show. So thanks, John, I appreciate that. I give you kudos on that. Well, and, and if I could add yeah. to that too, some, some of the other neat things about this, I think uh, for everyone out there who has a talk show, you're gonna be able to use that PTZ in studio, but you're also gonna be able to interview people from across the web now in real time. So whenever you're filming in studio, you could talk to someone on camera, uh, sitting in their home, just like we all are right now. And so I think it opens up a lot of options for your guests, because if you think about all the times that you've ever had people, you booked the studio and you had people that were supposed to come in and they couldn't find mm -hmm. the place or they were running late or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, their dog died and they couldn't be there, whatever reason that they give you that they can't show up. This makes it a lot easier for you to get guests, not only in Nashville, but across the globe. So it's like you can you know, talk to someone that's on the other side of the country in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's an amazing uh, change from what we have been used to in the past. And I think it's going to open up all these different talk shows that we have running on ECAT right now. 
in a way that has never happened before. Um, one more point about, you know, how you said about getting people involved. One thing else I want to tell you guys is right now with the stay at home situation, we have been trying to dedicate a, basically a stay at home time slot uh, once a week where anyone, if you're not, even for people that are not members, you know, if you have people that are making stuff at home right now, they can send it to me and we'll stick it in that time slot. There's no cost for them to become a member in the hope being that whenever we do get back to the studio, that they'll come join us, take the classes and get through that. But it kind of gives them the first taste of what NECAT can be for them as far as getting on the air and seeing their, their own faces in their own production. So I encourage you all, if you have friends at home that are creative people that are making things, let them know that we're doing that because it's not a regular time slot like um, all of you have with your own shows, but it's a dedicated spot that we're trying to put all that stuff into. The interesting content that's getting made, made so if it's a fireside concert where they're playing their own songs or if it's they made a, if they made their own uh, you know wacky cooking video or anything like that, there's space for that right now. So let people know that that's happening. But yeah, anybody else have a question? Cameron, I have a question about uh, music videos, if I could. Sure. Um, hi, everybody. It's great to, to see you all, by the way. And um, you had mentioned, I, I'd asked you about um, some music videos, and you had mentioned something about doing at home videos and uh, putting together, you know, something that's 30 minutes. And I was wondering, do you all also want just like five minute music videos that are individual or does something have to be, does it need to be strung together into certain time segments? Um, absolutely. So one of the things that we really have tried to push is more short form content. So music videos are, are uh, especially easy for us to go in the air because every day we have what we call indie rock block in the mornings and it runs for, so we can, take any music video that's getting made, whether it be a local or national, we can stick it into those time slots. Uh, so if you're making music videos at home, we can definitely put it there. We're also looking for things that, to fall in between other programs because on we're like on uh, NECAT channel 19, most of the programs are a half hour long, but on our arts and education, some of the shows may be an hour and a half, some of them may be 15 minutes. And so we're always looking for stuff to fill content in between. So making things like that, you can send it to us and we can get it on the air. Okay, you know, in great. In those spaces. Yeah. Okay. We look forward to seeing it. Thanks. Anybody else? Uh, Cameron, I have one question to ask you. Um, I have uh, a couple of shorts that I, I've worked on in the past, and they're really short, like five, six minutes and all. The only problem is um, they have like a James Bond kind of theme song in the background playing. Is that, it, would that, is that a problem or... It, it can be. What, what I would tell you to do, the best thing to do is send it to me. And let me see if I can help you get through the paperwork to cover that kind of stuff. Because the great thing now with all of these these tools is it's pretty mm -hmm. easy to track down what the song is because you can put it up, you can ask your phone what it is you're listening to. At that point, mm -hmm. we can find the, the paperwork that needs to get covered to, to cover that, that kind of thing. Um, music is one of those things that we want more music and we don't want people to be scared to put music in their songs. But we also, living in a town called Music City, we want to make sure that we're respecting our musicians. We have a great uh, thing set up on our, it's on our website and in the studio right when you come in the front door called The Chart that we kind of try to follow to make sure that we're covering all our bases. That way everyone gets paid the way they're supposed to be. Um, but usually we can track down what the song is and figure out what the, what rights we have to cover to, to go, you know, go around it. But the best thing I would say is send it to me and let me take a look at it and let's see if we can figure out a way to get it on the air. Send it to you via email or? You can send it to me. If you've got a link to it that's already up, you can just shoot me a, a, an email link and I can take a look at it that way. Or you can send okay. it through the FTP and we can look at it through there too. Whatever's easier okay. for you. Yep. Okay. Anybody else? A camera? Uh, hey, how are you? I can't hear. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Steve. Yeah, I, I hey, hear you. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, I did send in some uh, short comedy bits, uh, uh, like sketch comedies. Uh, it was real brief, but uh, I wonder if you got them. Or... I, I know that I got them. I, I believe that we've got them programmed, but I'm not, I couldn't tell you when, we're, when they're airing uh, off the top of my head. But if you shoot me an email, I'll try to look uh -huh. into that and see if I can let you know. Okay. Uh, and so it's up, still kind of up in there about starting back at the studio is starting open the studio right now we, we just don't have a date it, we're like I say we're working with both national state and the mayor's office about when that's going to happen they're telling us phase four and so the best thing you can do is just stay tuned right. to what the, the mayor's office sending out through all the the regular metro channels 
uh, and whenever you hear phase four, shoot me an email, and hopefully we'll have a date. Um, it, it's one of those things like whenever we first started this, we thought it was going to be a month, and then that month stretched into, you know, we thought we were going to be back uh, in August, and then when we got to there, they were like, oh, no, it's not time yet. So I, I hate to keep putting dates on it because I, I just don't know right now. Um, it's, it's one of those things we are at the mercy of so many other entities, and, and more than anything else, we just want to keep everyone safe. We don't want anyone to get sick. Um, and we, we want to make sure that we're all happy and healthy and that this place exists. And all of you are, are there with us, you know, when the time comes to be able to, to make your shows again. So um, I'd say the best thing I can do for now is encourage you to keep making things at home the way that you have been doing. Keep sending that to us and we'll try to find ways to put it on the air. I think more than anything, this is teaching us all okay. how to do it differently. And that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I think we have to, we have to grow. We have to change. We have to, um, stretch our abilities in the best way and this has forced a little bit of change and I think that overall long term that's going to be a good thing even though I know it can be painful for everyone who's been making a show for so long um, to to have that stopped so you know anything I can do to help feel free to message me I, I, I encourage you to do that but just keep making that stuff at home and sending it my way we'll get it on TV okay Cameron I had a question okay cool cool sure thank you uh, I had, I got an email that said something about, I don't remember the exact words, but since uh, the studio had been closed, they were going to extend the memberships or whatever. And then about a week later, I got something that said mine had expired. So I'm not sure what I need to do. So what basically is happens is we have, we have an automated system. So you pay your membership yearly. And at the end of that year, wherever you pay it, we go in manually, we change it right now people are getting they're getting those automated emails but what we have uh, committed to do at this point is we're going to extend everybody's membership when the time comes back so if you had another four months on your membership uh whenever we come back on you'll have that four months you know that you'll still be able to use so no one's going to lose any time during this thing we're still trying to figure out exactly how we're going to pay for all of that because all those membership dues do help keep the lights on you know in this place so if you pay your membership now you'll get that plus whatever time you already had on there in the end you don't need to worry about it if you're trying to submit something because I, I did have someone recently who had uh, I guess it had lapsed because we haven't been just renewing everybody because we're waiting till everyone gets back in the studio so we can just do it all in one uh, big blanket fashion but if you if you want to submit and you don't see your name on that producer list where you can submit a show if you just shoot us an email we can get that fixed for you that way you can continue to do so um, and then whenever we get back in like say if we've been gone six months we're going to extend everybody's membership up to that amount of time depending on if you had three months left you'll get three months if you had six months you would get six months etc does that make sense i just didn't want to find out that i have to go back and start all over and take all the classes over nope. all, all your classes are still good everything you know for i've got a lot of people here that are long time members and i've got a, you know, a couple people here that have just got started out maybe even somebody that took the first class but not the second class so anybody that wants to take the class again you're going to be welcome to do so. We're trying to figure out now how we're going to be able to open up that both to get everyone reacquainted and, um, with the studio in general and train you on those PTZ cameras that John was talking about earlier. Um, we're trying to find a balance between how many classes we need to hold right out the gate versus how much time uh, because people want to get back in the studio and make shows. And so one of the things we, we also know is some of the shoot time may get cut down a little bit because the changeover between the morning, whoever shoots in the morning versus whoever shoots in the afternoon. We don't want people crossing past in the building as much just for safety reasons. So as opposed to where you used to we get the studio until five, you may have to be out by 4.30 just to give uh, the staff time to clean up everything, you know, just due to, you know, uh, wipe down the cameras and make sure all that stuff is covered. But we haven't, we haven't got all that place. We, we don't want to, um, we don't want to jump the gun because we don't know when we're going to be back, but that's all stuff that's getting developed right now. But just to let everyone know, again, like you're not going to lose any of your time that you paid for as a member. You're going to get all that covered. Hey, Cameron, um, that brings up a point. Um, maybe we should send out some other email to the members, you know, saying if you get this automatic email, just realize, you know, Absolutely. I know we already did it once, but maybe just, you know, so we don't have anyone, any more confusion. Sure. Any other questions? I have a question. Good thing, Leah. How are you? Uh, hmm. You're breaking up on my end.
Yeah, she's breaking up online. Can you guys hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. I was just wondering if we're going to get an email that um, has the details of where students can submit information or videos that they've been creating. Uh, absolutely. So the, the best way to do that is just to email me directly uh, at Cameron at NECATnetwork.org. Uh, let, just let them know, say, hey, it's, just send me an email that says stay at home in the, in the title line, and we'll take a look at that content and tell them how to get it over to us uh, via the FTP. We're trying to send out all the instructions for anyone. Um, just today, I said that to, I don't remember who it was now. It may have been Tina, but we're trying to get everyone to send it over to the FTP because it's the easiest way to get it on the server when we're not in the building. But we're trying to find mm -hmm. work for all of that stuff. So um, it, it's one of those things, if they're making stuff at home, just shoot me an email, say, hey, this is what we did. Uh, a lot of times, if you send me a link, if you have uploaded it to a place like YouTube and send me a link, I can look at it from mm -hmm. there and tell you if it's a good fit, if it'll make sense. And as long as it still meets all of our regular guidelines, the same as, you know, all the same rules that every everyone goes by as far as uh, original content, you know, music and things like that, we will get it on the air. Uh, Cameron, one question. Uh, your email, is that on the website? It is on the website. It's uh, under the contact form. Uh, it's I'm super easy to find. And like I say, and I'm also in the, the Facebook member group. I'm there just about every day checking to see if anyone's messaged. So if, if you need to talk to me, shoot me an email. That's the best way to get me. Um, but you can also leave a note in through the messaging or just on the main page saying, hey, Cameron, I need to talk to you. Let me know the best way to get in touch with you, and I'll, I'll reach out. So if I wanted to send you something off of YouTube, like one of my little shorts, just should I just email me a link? Yep. Okay. Send me a link. Okay. I have a question. Hi, Cameron. Hey, how Hi, are you? Hi, Martina. Hey, thanks for the invite here. What is the format that you prefer for content to be sent to you? Does it have to be on YouTube? No, it doesn't have to be on YouTube. The, the best way to get it to us is through the FTP. That's the, the most simple way to get it uh, into the studio. For non-members, it's uh, because they don't have a space on the website. It could be hard for them to do that. Um, but everyone that is a member, has there's a drop-down box where you can pick your name and you can submit okay. it through the FTP. That's the easiest way to get it to us. But uh, if you ever want to, if you have a question about content or like if you're saying, hey, is this good for the, you know, Maybe it's not your regular show, but it's something you want to run. If you send me a link to YouTube, I can watch it that way just as easily as I can the other way. So that's fine to email. You can email it to me that way. But what I'm going to do is probably watch it go, yeah, send it through the FTP and we'll get it on the air. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody else? I just want to say one thing. Um, I know um, I haven't been part of public access in a long time. And uh, I had, uh, in case anybody doesn't know, I had a show on, uh, with me and Joey, it was called The Bad Poet Show slash The Slime Show. And uh, we had been doing so much really well. And I just wanna say thank you to Cameron and John Ferguson for doing all you can to help make the studio better. And it has been, from what I've seen with the huge green screen, which I was talking about that for a long time. But I just want to take this time and opportunity to thank you guys for the hard work you guys have done and even made it much easier to put the show, to put shows back on the air. And, you know, I also brag a lot about what goes on. I, I, I talk a lot about public access and where I got my start, considering my mom used to work for public access too a long time ago. So it's really refreshing to see that it, it's now easier to put on shows at public access than it was say back in the past. So I really wanna give a really big shout out to John Ferguson and you Cameron for doing all of what you can to help make the studio a hell of a lot better for um, us uh, creators. So thank you guys. Well, I appreciate that. They're, they're, I believe in local TV, I think it's important to, to give space for voices of all kinds to come in together and, and speak their piece and say what they wanna say. Um, there's so many people working behind the scenes, like said, the Metro staff that you mentioned and uh, all of our board of directors and just the other members that volunteer for shows. Um, you guys make it happen more than me. I'm just here to help navigate it and answer the questions more than anything else. But I, I have definitely, uh, I've been really proud of all of the work that's happened uh, in the past year since I've been on. 
I think there was a lot of great things that happened uh, with the, the people that were right before me to help keep NECAT together and, and, and launch some initiatives that hadn't been there before. So I think every generation has a space and I think everyone has room to improve on it. Uh, I'm, I, I feel like we're doing that. And, I, and that really, uh, I think goes back to you guys making shows more than it ever will be me uh, sitting here pushing buttons and, and making it all, you know, get on the yeah. air, but so. Well, it's, it's, it's a big difference from what it used to be, like three quarter inch and half inch machines. And by the way, I just wanted to mention you something. I'm, I'm actually trying to get old shows from the slime show uh, digitized. My only problem is, is that trying to get, trying to convert them into, because they're all on half inch and yeah. some of them are on three quarter. So that's the problem that I'm having because I'd like to put a little bit of the best of, you know, that, but it's, it's, it's difficult to go from half inch to digital. You know. Three quarter I make and help you out. I, I, um, I actually have a three quarter inch machine in my garage that I have kept for that very reason. Um, well, I'll, I'll have to uh, check and see if I still have any of the three quarters, but if I yeah. do, I'm definitely going to get yeah. in touch with you. Yeah, let me know. I so say I could I could probably help out with that. And again, it's like, if we know people, um, I, I have friends around town who, um, I'm an old gearhead myself. I, I mean, right now to my right, there is a literal TV VCR sitting on my desk that I still use. So there are, uh, there are ways to make stuff like that happen. Uh, let me know that that's something you want and I'll try to put you in touch with some people that, that may can help get some of that digitized for you. We'd love to see it. I, I know the Bat Poet and Slime Show is uh, legendary in the studio. I know it was, you know, uh, Joey was on the cover of the scene a couple of times. I still get people come in all the time and, whenever they say, well, what is the kneecap? And I say, well, did you ever see the Bat Poet? And they say, they say, well, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, that's, that's the station. So uh, it's, it, it lives on for sure. So um, yeah, I, I'd love to see that stuff. Oh, by the way, Cameron, one other question I want to ask you about the classes. Um, are, are there going to be, uh, I noticed you guys had the makeup and special effects. Are those mm -hmm. like separate or are they, are they going to still be there or? It is so kind of kind of uh, one of the things that we, we try to do. We have our, our regular, you know, we have our production and pre-production class, which is the class that all of our producers have to take. We also mm -hmm. offer editing class, a green screen class, and an audio class at no additional cost to any of our members uh, who can just come in and get some extra training on those things. In the past, we've also done some specialty classes. Last year, we did a, a thing with SAG AFTRA who came in and they taught some acting stuff. Uh, all of that is stuff that we plan to do when we get back in the studio and as, as well as digital right now, just trying to do some round table talks where people can come in, talk about directing, talk about screenwriting, talk about journalism, and really just uh, have you guys come in and listen and ask your questions. And I feel like uh, just having those conversations a lot of time can make you a better TV producer or a better filmmaker, however you want to brand yourself. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just the idea of uh, conversation opens those doors. Uh, that's something that we're always trying to do both, you know, at home right now while, you know, while we have to be at home and when we get back together, the plan is to always have that be there. Uh, the makeup stuff is something we've, we've done it uh, in the past for our adult learners. And last year, I know we did it during our TV camp for the kids. So it is mm -hmm. definitely something we're still uh, involved with. And as long as all the people um, over there will have us or come visit us, we, we'd love to have them back. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so, uh, so should I be watching to what the mayor has to say about uh, public access opening, or should it be, should I be watching uh, uh, Nashville Tech? Sure, I, I will defer to John on this one, but I would say that whenever we, as soon as I know, you guys will know. I promise. Like, there's no one itching to get back in that studio more than me, uh, mm -hmm. and. I, I want to get you all back. So we'll, we'll be sending out an email blast, but again, I'll let, I'll defer to John and let him speak on that again. Yeah. So David, uh, we, we are going to be um, in coordination with both. So obviously the mayor's, uh, you know, weekly now he's, he's dropped it to, to once a week. Uh, COVID updates are going to play a big part in it because when they announce that they're going to be switching over, you know, going into phase three, um, that is going to mean that Nashville State is going into their phase three, according to the, the chair of the COVID-19 uh, task force for Nashville State. Um, however, we are still going to uh, connect it to phase four of Nashville State's plan. So um, we are still going to probably be needing to get to phase four for the um, for metro government as well. So I think that National State is going to be taking their cues from the mayor's office. 
um, but they still will need to make the final call as far as when they are going to their phase four plan. Um, there is a COVID-19 update from the mayor's office uh, tomorrow, so you should probably tune in to that and see what the update is. Uh, we'll be covering it on uh, Metro National Network Channel 3, um, and so you can view that uh, on the web on our uh, Nashville.gov website at stream.nashville.gov, um, but also you can view it uh, afterwards at, 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 on, on YouTube. So I think that the answer is you're, you're going to have to be uh, watching for both of those. But like Cameron said, as soon as we are opening up, they'll be uh, we'll be you know blowing on the trumpet. So I don't think you're going to need to uh, listen very very hard to to hear. Um, that we're going to be opening up. I think that we'll be we'll be making sure that we get the word out as as, as uh, strongly as possible. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? Anything that we can answer, or anything you want to know about, whether say at the stay at home or just going forward for the future when it comes to equipment, things like that. Um, I just have another question about. Um, Going forward with the classes of the new TriCaster, um, <clears throat> is that something that you guys are going to try to set up, like schedule classes for people who, because for me, I, I feel like I was just like, getting my feet wet <laughs> before this whole thing kind of popped off. And so I'm still kind of in that realm where, okay, I think I remember everything, but now that there's new equipment, will we have like a refresher class and then an additional class on how to use the new equipment? Sure. So the way that historically in the past, we, we uh, had started running a monthly uh, production class, which is the one that Tim and Adam would teach. And then bi-monthly, at least, I would teach the pre-production class for everyone who graduated and wanted to be a producer. Um, mm -hmm. in the past year, there were multiple months where we had to book two and sometimes even three classes because we had so many new members coming in that wanted to get involved. Uh, we will continue to put as many of those classes in place as we can monthly as well as uh, if we have new members, it, it's no big deal for a, a previous member like yourself to just say, hey, I want to sit in on the class again. We'll make room for you to come in and do that and be part of the rotation that night. Uh, one of the other okay. things we had talked about doing um, before this all kind of happened and still something that I, that I hope that we could do in the future is, um, like I mentioned earlier, we do a lot of music video content that runs on the station. We had talked about doing a uh, kind of just doing hosted segments where it basically we would have members come in uh you could host the music videos that week or just like some weeks it might be me some weeks it might be you uh et cetera, et cetera. but it would allow people to come in and get some more on-camera time and behind the scenes time for stuff that would actually go on television uh that would already be planned and, and things like that so you wouldn't have to commit to a a half hour show as much as you would just have time to to knock out some things like that so that's one of the things that we're, okay. we're hoping to do when we get back in to give people an opportunity to get a little bit more practice time in on something that is mm -hmm. ever changing because the music videos rotate in and out pretty frequently. Um, so that's something that when we get back, we hope to do, but it's hard to give all the details on it because we just don't know when that's going to happen just yet. But um, absolutely yeah. you'll have opportunities both for things like that to audit classes again, or, uh, you know, or to volunteer on a show. If, a lot of times if, uh, if you want to get some more action in the studio, it's easy for me to find someone who needs help. Uh, most of you, I think, would agree that it is hard to get crew members. And sometimes the best thing you can do is just go sit in with a show and watch what they're doing or help them get it done. Uh, you can learn a whole lot by just actually, you know, making something. So uh, if yeah. you need that help, just let me know. We'll, we'll find space for you to do that. Okay, cool. Hey, Thank you. So Cameron. I just want to add that we also encourage very heavily uh, for members to uh, book studio time for practice. I mean, I think Absolutely. that that's something we, we I think, has been, been beneficial for a lot of people. It's a no-pressure situation where people can come in, get their hands on the equipment, and just practice. There's nothing wrong with that. We encourage it. And also, we'll be there, uh, you know, on hand to be able to walk you through um, all of the equipment, especially because we've got a lot of new stuff. So we've been doing yeah. that in the past. We're walking through through equipment with people as they come into practice, but we are going to be doing it especially uh, because of all of the, the the new stuff that we've got. So uh, we understand that it's going to be a learning curve for a lot of people, and and that's the way it is normally, even without COVID. Is that you know maybe you come in and book. Uh, on, on this day, but you, maybe you don't come in for another month or two, and so there's going to be a little bit right. rust that you got to kick off, and there's going to be um, a lot of, of, of uh, 
of relearning. And so we, we understand that there, that's nothing new. Uh, and so the, the guys, Tim and Adam, are very patient, uh, and they have no problem kind of walking through um, any, any questions you have about the equipment that we've got. Uh, that's, that's the one thing you should never be afraid to do is ask questions when you're there shooting. You shouldn't be, be uh, uh, you know, uh, required to remember everything from class. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, and, and one of the big things that I encouraged in the, the, in the past year, whenever we were, you know, making all this brand new stuff was a lot of times you get finished with class and you're ready the next day to come in and start making your show. But I have encouraged people to come in, pitch me their ideas, tell me what they want to do. That way I can take the experience that I have and say, these are the, the pitfalls you may fall into. Look out for these kind of things. But also like John said, that first studio booking, maybe don't even plan that that's going to be your, your first show. Just have, do a dry run. You know what I mean? Come in, put your set together, figure out where your cameras are going to go. Just do a – spend that, that five hours that you get to do a dry run and figure out where everything's going to go. Take pictures, mark it down, draw diagrams, you know, work on that stuff. That way when you come in for the your second, you know, booking, you come in and you kind of mm -hmm. already know where it's all going to be placed. So you don't spend that time uh, putting it all together as much as you've got more time with your guests to actually, you know, shoot your show. So I would encourage you to right. do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dan Meredith has his hand raised. Hey, Dan. Online manual for the new TriCaster, something that we might be able to look over. I, I'm sure you can, uh, John. You yeah, I can, I, can, I can send out the manual uh, uh, as soon as this calls over. Um, if, if you know, we I can work with Cameron and getting an email list, or I can yes, send so it everybody on this right now at videos. <laughs> I'm sorry, who was that? Hey, John, can you hear me? Hey, John, I'm actually yeah, right yeah. Now looking at. Oh, it's Steven. Uh, I'm actually looking. There are videos on YouTube that tell you exactly how to run the TriCaster. I'm actually looking at one now. Yeah, so good. So, yeah, it's the PC1. Um, and so, yeah, there's the plenty of documentation that. and videos. There you go. So, Steven just put the, the link in the chat for YouTube video. Um, so, that's very, very beneficial. But, yeah, the manual I, I can make, make sure is distributed and people can start reading it before you get into the studio. We can get that out through email. Stephen, if you would be so kind, can you also post that in the Facebook member group just so everyone will have it there to take a look at as well? Will do. Thank you, sir. Uh, Steve McClure has his hand raised. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, for Cameron. Uh, I wonder if any, <laughs> if there's any money in the budget for, set aside for props. Uh, I, it, there's a lot of stuff for like having a talk show, but some other things, uh, like, sure. I don't know, doing sketch comedy to, runs into some money buying costs and what have you. And so, and, so I know one of the I'm, things I'm that, thinking I could use the, uh, I don't know about the green screen, maybe I could use that or something. Yeah. So I know one of the things that me and John had talked about a lot, uh, in the, the months leading up to us being closed down was, uh, spending some money on, uh, some new backdrops, some just things like, uh, props. I know there was some discussion about getting a, a more news desk kind of uh, thing going on as well. Um, all stuff that, you know, part of it is just making sure that the finances are there from Metro side that we can, we can get that. I know we had a list going. If there's anything member wise that you think we could use, um, if you send it to me, I'm happy to try to, to put it out there to see if we can make it happen. It really mm -hmm. just, it comes down to the things that are going to benefit the most amount of people. Um, we expect, you know, Whenever you produce a show here, it is your show. You own the copyright to it. Uh, you're responsible for everything that goes on the air. So when it comes to certain things, uh, if you need a, if you, you know, if you've got a sketch with a giant hot dog in it, you're going to have to provide a costume of a giant hot dog. Uh, we're not going to buy that for you. But if, uh, if for some chance we do buy a giant hot dog costume and you write a sketch around it, then you know more power to you. So there will be some new props and some new sets in place. Uh, fingers crossed. Whenever this is all said and done, that we will be able to get all that up and running pretty quick. Um, but it's just a matter of, uh, again, we're, we're trying to get things that are going to help everyone or as many people as possible in, in the best way. Best thing to do is if you, if you have something that you think would be beneficial for everybody or something you think that would be used in the studio well, send me, a, uh, send me an email. Say this is what it is. If you've got a link to it, let me know. Uh, me and John will discuss it and see if we can figure out a way to make it happen, either from Metro side or from MECAT side. I know just in the uh, something as simple as, I told John, I was like, hey, we need some Apple boxes uh, because that's something that, you know, every studio should have. And it was it was pretty easy to get to make that happen once we kind of said, like, this is something everybody would use. Uh, 
you know, for all these different types of production. So it, it is possible. And again, John, if you want to chime in on any of this, feel free, but um, that is definitely something we're working on. Just let us know what you're, what you think would be beneficial. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think Cameron, uh, answered it pretty perfectly. I think that it, the main thing that uh, you could do to make sure that we uh, are getting the, the tools and the equipment that you need um, is to send us your sort of your wish list. I mean, I think that we, if, if there is enough of a need for it, uh, we can definitely um, get what's necessary and get what is needed. There is, um, is, there is money that can be spent for, for search, you know, things that are uh, beneficial. So, if enough people are looking for it, then we can definitely do it. And Cameron and I have both uh, had discussions about props um, in in the past, and so I think it's definitely something that we can we can um, upgrade uh, because we have been using the same um, the same sets for for a long time. I, I always joke whenever I, I give tours of the studio uh, about our brick walls because they're they're on so many different shows, and I encourage I tell people all the time if. Uh, I've traveled America quite a bit, and if you are a person that travels, you know, for, for work or for pleasure or whatever, find the local public access station in whatever town you're in, Louisville, New York, Cleveland, Los Angeles, whatever. If you turn on public access at your hotel and just watch it, sooner or later, you're going to see that same brick wall. I don't know what happened back in the 80s. I think they just issued them to everybody, uh, but all the public access stations have them. Uh, we have kept <laughs> ours for all these years. I, I know... Uh, I've seen some shows from 20 years ago on NECAD that, that had that same stuff. So I think it's about as long as that building has been there, those brick walls have been there. So we do need an update. We're working on that. Um, but, you know, again, just send us the stuff that you want and we'll try to make it happen. Just don't get rid of the plastic burns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Zach Galifianakis is actually does a show <laughs> called yep. uh, the plastic burns and all. So I was just saying. Love Absolutely. You know, I tell people all the time, that's the thing about, if you think about, um, I mean, public access is special. It's, it's different. You know, it's like, we're not competing with um, the big shows on TV. You know, it's like people aren't deciding between us or, you know, NCIS or Walking Dead or pick whatever your favorite show is. If they're watching access, they want a specific type of thing. They want to see local content from just a different kind of voice. And those are the voices that you guys all have. Um, I know when it comes to, the way that we feel about politics and religion and just our, you know, socioeconomic stuff. Every one of you comes from a different place. Uh, and because you come from that different place, your voice is important. It offers a perspective that no one else is going to have. And we want you to be able to relay that to, you know, to the masses in a way that, uh, I don't know, if you weren't doing this, I don't know what you would do, but say everyone here, you know, has something special to say, we want to give you a space to do that. Is there any other questions that we can answer for you guys? We've been on just about an hour now, so we're going to start wrapping it up. But if there's anything else, you say you can always email me. I know John's really good about email, too. If you've got questions for him, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer it. Um, from our board members, is there anything anybody wants to chime in and say? Um, I just This is Tyler Pimmon, uh, the chair. I just I, I wanted to reiterate some of the things that Cam said. Uh, first of all, thank you for your patience as we're dealing with this time. Um, and as he mentioned, we want nothing more for the studio to be open for you guys to uh, get back in there and, and use this great new equipment. Um, we are working, as he mentioned, on some funding. Uh, we have been hit like other 501 uh, C3s, and hopefully we'll have some good news soon of, of some funding coming in. But um, again, I just want to thank you all for your uh, dedication, your uh, your commitment to NECAD as far as like uh, being members and uh, keep on making that content and, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in person real soon. Well, very good. I think that's about all that we have for you. So uh, this meeting is going to go up on our YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com slash NECAD network. Uh, so if you want to watch it back and, uh, you know, send me any other questions by email, you're welcome to do that. Uh, I say, I, I'm here for you guys. I'm here to be your advocate, uh, to try to get you the things that you need. And again, just to be your voice. So please reach out to me if there's something that we can do to, to make things happen. Uh, we love all the content that you're sending us. Again, we encourage you to just keep making that stuff at home the best that you can. And we hope to see you all back in the studio real soon. Thanks, Thank Dan. you. All right. Thank Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye.
Thanks, guys. Take care.